Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. My name is Mitchell and today, this week, is gonna be a little bit different. I know you might be wondering, where the hell are you? And that's because I'm in my basement. Now, the reason for that is because this space is being renovated and the office where we normally film all of our videos is filled up with all the stuff that used to be in this room. So we thought we'd come out here, embrace the industrial vibes and uh, film our next video. Now, I know the echo is ridiculous. Uh, it used to be a lot worse. We've hung some blankets and put some blankets on the floor to try and get rid of most of it, but it's not perfect. So you're gonna have to kind of deal with it. I can assure you that next week there will be no echo. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Today's video is going to be about how we get drone photos or tips and tricks to get better drone photos. Now, we filmed this video originally a couple hours ago outside. So we got some clips of us loading all of our gear into the car. We got some drone clips of us driving to our location. We got there and the weather just started deteriorating. It's so windy. Um, I don't even think we could take the drone off. Like it's snowing and it's windy and like trees are literally being blown over. And then by the time we walked into our location and we got to where we were gonna fly the drone, it was just so windy we couldn't even take it off. There was like, I threw it up in the air and there was warnings telling me, error, error, land as soon as possible. So we thought we'd pack it in, come home, sit down, set up in this echoey chamber, and we thought we'd tell you guys these tips and tricks anyways, except we're now in a different location. So not ideal, but we're gonna make it work. First off, these tips and tricks will work for any drone. Our drone of choice is the Mavic 2 Pro, but it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't even matter if it's a DJI drone, as long as it takes off and it takes photos, you're okay. You can use these tips. Our first tip is to not shoot directly into the sun. Now this is because of dynamic range. Dynamic range is your camera's ability to expose for both the shadows and the highlights in the same frame. Drone cameras don't usually have the best dynamic range, so that's why instead of shooting directly into the sun, try to keep it behind you or to your sides to use it to light your subject. In our experiences, when shooting directly into the sun, it is extremely difficult to expose both the sky and your subject properly, so we try to use these techniques to minimize the amount of times that we shoot into the sun. Another useful tip for taking drone photos, which is also useful for taking photos with a camera, is to shoot during golden hour. This is one of those super basic photography tips that I'm sure everyone who's interested in photography has heard. The same tips apply when taking photos with a drone. The time of day can have a drastic effect on how your photos turn out, especially when taking photos of a landscape. Golden hour is the hour after sunrise and before sunset when the sun is really low in the sky and you get those nice long shadows that add depth to your photos. You get a really, really warm light and it just looks, it just looks perfect. It's like, you can't get any better. An advantage to shooting the sunrise golden hour specifically is that that is when you usually get low hanging fog and clouds in the landscape. These things are like a drone pilot's dream conditions and they can definitely make your photos stand out. But that does mean that you have to wake up for sunrise, which usually isn't the easiest thing to do. But if you wanna get the shot, you gotta make some sacrifices. Now, when we're shooting drone photos, something that we always try to look for is a central subject. It could be a person, a lake, a tree, pretty much anything that stands out. This pulls your eye into the photo and gives your eye something to focus on. Sometimes if there isn't one in the photo already, you can create one. We can do this by adding a pop of color. Having someone or something that is a bright color in the scene creates color contrast. This is the reason why you see those classic Pacific Northwest photos with someone wearing a bright yellow raincoat in the woods amongst all the green trees because yellow and green contrast extremely well. Now, when it comes to post-production, these photos can be edited like any other photos. It all depends on your editing style. However, we do have a few tips that can give you that extra little spice, that extra little, just that extra little something to bring your photos up and make them just that much better. 
For this, we're gonna edit a photo that we took a couple of weeks ago in the snow, because obviously the weather outside is not cooperating in our favor. Sometimes we've taken a photo and thought, if only I could remove one little object or these trees were just a little closer together, it would be so much better. Well, you can do that with clone stamping. Clone stamping allows you to remove small blemishes and objects from a scene by copying other parts of the images in its place. It's kind of hard to explain, so if you don't know what it is, go Google it, but you can go from pictures that look like this, you can add a couple trees and change up a couple things and get a photo that looks like this. It's a pretty powerful tool. Lastly, another tool that is kind of underrated but adds a lot to your photos is selective exposure. Using a gradient filter to make some of the image darker leads your eye through the scene. In this photo, I used a gradient filter to darken the edges and lead your eye into the middle. Now, obviously, all of these tips are personal preference and are by no means hard and fast rules. These are just tips that we use and hope will make your photos just a little bit better. Now, if you're new to photography in general, whether it's with a drone or a camera, and you want to learn more but you don't know where to start, we would recommend Skillshare. And funny enough, this video is sponsored by Skillshare. I'm sure you guys have had similar experiences to me when you're trying to learn something new, so you scour every corner of the internet just to find one piece of relevant information. As a Skillshare member, you're able to take hundreds of different classes in tons of different categories without having to pay for each one. So I can go and take a class about editing and really dive into that one, and then in the same day, I can learn about sound mixing. It's incredible. Skillshare is also affordable especially when compared to pricey in-person classes and workshops. An annual subscription to Skillshare is less than $10 a month. On Skillshare right now, a class which I've been enjoying very much lately is called Street Photography, Unlocking the Secrets of Composition, Color, and Confidence by Craig Whitehead. This class dives into the basics of street photography and finding compelling compositions in unique places. Like I mentioned before, there are hundreds of different classes that cover a whole range of different topics. So whatever you're into, whether it's music, if it's art, if it's cooking, there's a class for you on Skillshare. The first 500 people who click the link in the description will get two free months of premium membership so you can explore your creativity today. We highly recommend it. Anyways, that's all the tips we've got for you guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you go out and use these tips, we'd love to see them because we want to see them in action. So make sure you go tag us on Instagram right up there at TMS Productions underscore. And if you're new here, make sure you go down, comment, like, subscribe. It really helps us out. And we'll see you guys next Monday. Mm.